everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo, my name is Adam Smith, and today in this game overview and gameplay video, I'm excited to be checking out Evolution Another World from Crowd Games. This is landing on Kickstarter in mid-May, and for the specific date and the link to the campaign, it's in the pinned comment in video description, as well as up in the top right-hand corner if you want to find more info. Inside this video, you're going to get to see a game overview and a few rounds of gameplay to give you a great idea as to how the solo mode for Evolution Evolution Another World works. In this game, you create animals and give them traits so they survive and thrive in the chaotic world of wondrous creatures. The goal of the game is to give your creatures enough energy to transmute and transcend their state of existence. The first player to transmute three creatures wins the game. This is a fast-paced, easy-to-learn game with a solo mode included in the core game, which does change the end game condition. We'll talk about that more later in the video. Mechanically, it is inspired by Evolution New World, but trades some complexity there for more dynamic dynamic and light gameplay. We'll start off with the game overview. I'll go over all the components I've got here on the table as I've set up for the solo mode. We'll start things off with the energy deck. This one right here with a waterfall background. Find all these cards, shuffle them up, place them within easy reach. You're going to draw the top card off the deck and reveal it, which I've already gone ahead and done. You're also going to take a look at the bottom of the card and dependent on how many players you're playing. And when you're playing solo, you're playing a two player game. So you'll take a look at the candles down at the bottom of the card. There's two right here. It states underneath it two energy. So we take two energy tokens, place them at the bottom portion of the card. Now, some of these cards, and once they're placed here, are called the energy source. Once these energy source cards are placed, some of them will have a top section as well. You'll see in this case two, so two more energy at the top section of this card, but some of the cards that come off the top of this deck may not even have anything up here. You may only have energy coming along the bottom. Now for all the energy tokens that are not currently in play, you're going to place them within easy reach in the supply token area. I've got energy tokens inside of a game tray. Game trays are not included inside of the box. It's worth mentioning that. This right here is a sleep token. There's a whole bunch of them. Also got them inside of a game tray. There's also transmutation tokens. And these tokens sit inside of acrylic bases to keep them standing up. Next up, we have the Evolution deck. You'll find a lizard on the back of this one, as well as an energy track along the bottom. Get these cards, shuffle them all together, and place them within easy reach. To fill out my player area, I'm gonna go ahead and draw one card off the top of the Evolution deck. This becomes my creature to start the game off. It comes in face down. You'll see the lizard on the back of it, and at the very bottom, again, the energy track facing up. And then we're also gonna draw five cards, which will make up our starting hand. Now, when you're playing the game solo, you're gonna be going up against what's called a shade. It's a virtual opponent. It is ominous, it's swift, and relentless. In this case, you're gonna go ahead and draw a card off the top of the Evolution deck. Again, face down, this will be the creature that the shade begins the game with. The one thing to mention though is the shade does not get a hand of cards. What the shade does get is the first player marker. Now go ahead and find the choice cards. You're going to shuffle them together, place them face down. Easy to find. They have night scenery on the card back. That'll do it for everything you need to have on the table for the solo mode. So a very small footprint and a very quick setup time. There's two other things worth having close by to you. You have this trait reference sheet. It is double-sided, which can be very helpful while going through gameplay. This reference sheet is also double-sided. And last, but certainly not least, the player reference card, giving you a nice breakdown of a full game round, as well as the win condition there at the very bottom. As a player, you need to transmute three of your creatures to win. And to wrap up the game overview, let's quickly talk about the solo mode specifics that you should be aware about. First off, when setting up for the solo mode, you are setting up as you would for a two-player game, as I mentioned earlier in the video. Now, the shade, as you saw, does not have a hand of cards. It's actually going to play directly from the evolution deck, which is the deck with the lizard and the track, the energy track on it. Now, the other thing to mention is on pages 10 and 11 of the rule book is where the solo mode rules can be found, and there you're going to find the special algorithm in terms of resolving the shade's turns. When the shade character has to choose between a creature or a trait, you're going to use the choice card coming off the top of the choice deck, which is way up there in those mini cards with the moon on the back. You'll draw one of those. It'll help you to resolve which of the two it takes. Now in the solo mode, the round is going to end when all your creatures are asleep. It doesn't matter if the shade has non-sleeping creatures. In other words, creatures that are still awake. And last but not least, there's no change in the solo mode for the player in terms of what they need to accomplish to win. You need to transmute three creatures to win the game. However, the shade only needs to transmute one. 
That's going to do it for the game overview. Now let's move into some gameplay. I'll show you a few rounds to give you a great idea as to how this game flows and operates to help you make an informed decision as to whether or not Evolution Another World is for you. Now the first thing you're going to do as a player is take a look at the five cards you've drawn up. At the start of the round, you're able to redraw cards. If you wish, you can discard cards from your hand and draw an equal number of cards from the deck. The first player marker is with the shade character to start off the game, and so the shade character will take the very first turn. And the first thing you're going to check is to see whether or not all the creatures that the shade is controlling are sleeping. And if they are, you're going to draw a card from the evolution deck and place it face down as a new shade creature to the right of the other ones. Nothing to resolve there. Now we'll talk about traits. We're going to choose a shade that isn't sleeping with the most energy on its track. In this case, we only have one, so it's quite obvious. But if there's a tie, you're going to choose the leftmost one. We're going to draw a card from the evolution deck and select the trait oriented. In the same way as the pitcher, but if it is a caring or metamorphic, you're going to rotate the card upside down to select the other trait on it. And you'll add the selected trait to the creature. Because the trait was not caring or metamorphic, we don't have to rotate the card upside down to select the other trait on it. So this one is just going to get put underneath of the current creature that is there. Now it's worth mentioning if the creature already has this trait, you're going to add it to an adjacent creature to the right. If this is also impossible, you just flat out discard the drawn card. Now when you attach a trait to a creature, you're going to want to make sure that you can not only see the trait up top, but also the description underneath. So we're activating the Shade's character at this point, and we're checking to see its energy track. If it currently is filled all the way to the end, it's going to transmute. And as I talked about earlier in the video, the second it goes ahead and transmutes one creature, you've lost. This isn't the case, so we move on to the next step, which is if the creature has gained any aggressive orange trait this turn, which you can see the trait is green underneath the fireproof text there, then it's going to try to attack your creature, and you're going to use a choice card to determine the target. Again, in this case, it's not orange, so it will not be attacking. It's important to note that the creature for the shade is going to attack only if success is certain. In other words, if the target loses energy or a trait or falls asleep. If the creature has several attacking traits, you're going to resolve them in the following order. Lulling, Fire Breathing, Vampire. These are the types of traits that associate themselves with the orange trait. And then after the attack, the attacker falls asleep and the shade's turn ends. If there is no attack, you just continue onwards. And in this case, there is no attack. I want to quickly touch on some of the icons we're seeing here. So right here it says, when attacked, this creature does not lose its traits. That's what that icon means. You also see icons for particular traits. You can go over to the trait reference sheet to find out what this trait does. Here we see fireproof and it's a defensive trait. It says when this character is attacked, it does not lose any traits. It also specifically mentions another trait in reference. It says fireproof does not prevent the effect of vengeful since that is not an attack. And vengeful can be seen down here. So green traits are all defensive traits, whereas the orange traits are all aggressive traits. On the opposite side for reference, you have light blue, which are energetic traits, and you have purple, which are special traits. Now, something that's worth mentioning for solo players out there is at the very back of the rulebook in the solo mode section, there is actually a section devoted to changes in the traits. So even though you're going to be using the reference sheet to reference what those traits do, make sure you also take a quick look at these ones and become familiar with them as they actually behave a little bit differently than what's on the reference sheet. Let's continue with the shade player's activation. We already know that based on this chosen creature, the first thing we checked was whether it had enough energy to win the game. It did not. It was not able to transmute, so that's good. So we carried on from the first step to the attack. If the trade had have been orange, we would be getting attacked by this creature, but it's not. It's green. So we're continuing on to the next thing. The next thing is the creature is going to try to gain one energy from the source, starting with the lower portion of the card. So there is actually energy here for it to take so it will take one if the creature has gained energy the shade turn ends so it is going to end right here however let's say that there wasn't any energy to take so in that case it would continue to the next step if the creature has any attacking traits whatsoever in other words not ones just gained this round but at all then it tries to attack if there is no attack the shade turn fully ends at this point now across that entire activation for the shade creature, the only time the creature will fall asleep is if it gets an orange trait on its turn because that means it would have gone ahead and made an attack. And after the attack, it would have gone ahead and fallen asleep. In this case, and in every other case during the activation, this creature is awake. 
Let's now head into the player turn, which is my turn, and inside that turn I can perform up to three steps. The last one, the third one, is required. The other two are optional. The first optional step I could take is creating a new creature. Simply placing an evolution card face down from my hand on the table, this creates a new creature with no traits. So I could simply select one of the five I have in hand, place it face down on the table. Now this is an optional step, but I chose to go ahead and do it. So I've created a creature. You can only create one per turn. You have to make sure that the back of the card is facing up. You also can look at the face side of the card at any point in time of any of your creatures, but you can't look at other players or the shade players cards at all. You can also create any number of creatures over the course of the game, but you only need to transmute three of them to win, as I mentioned before. Also, creatures of one player, so all of my creatures, are considered friendly to each other, but creatures can attack friendly creatures as well as other player creatures, so keep that in mind. So I decided to go ahead with step number one. Let's move to step number two. It is also an optional thing to do. You can add a new trait. You can place one evolution card from your hand face up under one of your creatures, giving the existing creature a new trait. If you choose to add a trait from your hand, be aware of the fact you can use the top or the bottom portion of the card for its trait, simply rotating it 180 and then sliding it under the creature you've chosen. Now, of course, you can only add one trait per turn. You may add a trait to any one of your creatures, including the creature you just created, or even ones that are sleeping, if you have any with tokens on them. And a creature can have multiple different traits, but it can never have two copies of the same trait. Now, something that's very important to note is that whenever you have a trait description that conflicts with the basic rules of the game, the trait description trumps the basic rules. And if you have several traits of a creature trigger at the exact same time, the owner gets to decide the order in which to resolve them. So the first two steps of the player's turn we chose to do as they were optional. I placed a creature in play and I also placed a trait on a creature that's existing. The third step we have to do, it says you must choose one of your non-sleeping creatures and activate it. However, if all your creatures are sleeping, then you skip this step. In this case, all our creatures are still awake, so we have to choose one to activate. Now let's quickly talk at a high level about what each of these different trait categories mean. So we have four major colors, orange, purple, blue, and green. The orange ones are all about attacking. This trait is going to allow your creature to gain energy tokens from the supply and deal damage to another creature. The green ones, as I said before, are defensive traits, and they're only used when your creature is attacked. So they do not trigger during the creature's activation. They allow your creature to prevent losses or even strike back in retaliation. Now the light blue are the energetic traits. Traits, and these ones allow your creature to gain additional energy tokens or to transfer them between your creatures, which can be very handy. The purple traits will allow your creature to interact with other creatures in various ways or to create complex combos. So I'm going to go ahead and choose to activate this creature right here. And as you can see during the player turn here, one and two, we've already done three. We're choosing to activate one of our non-sleeping. We've chosen this one. We get to choose one action for it. We can either gain one energy from the source. We can transmute. We can attack another creature or we can sleep. If we choose to gain energy, we take a look at our source card here. We do have energy in the source. We could take that energy and place it on the track down here for the creature that we activated. But it is worth mentioning there is more energy on that source card. It's up in the top section as well. So how do we access that? Well, you need to have the exact same trait matching on the creature that you've activated to take that energy. So in other words, if this energy was gone, I wouldn't even be able to take an energy from the source as the trait currently on the one I've selected does not match what's up here. Also be sure to keep an eye on the activated creature because there might be a trait that actually gives you a better benefit when you're taking an energy from the source. So just keep an eye on that. Some specific ones like Caring, Charming, and Long Tail can be useful here. Another thing to mention is that your creature does not fall asleep when gaining energy. Another option is to transmute as you work towards your goal to win the game. If you have four energy here across the track, then you can choose to discard all your traits as well as the creature, and it will disappear and a transmutation token will come into play instead and that will let you know you've got one of the three you need to win the game. It's worth noting there are creatures which are considered tiny they can transmute if they have three energy on the track and no more than three traits. Another possible action is attacking, which is what I plan on doing in order to make an attack. You have to have a trait that actually is an attacking trait, and I do. It's an orange one, so this creature absolutely can target another creature. It states on it, the target falls asleep, and if it does, this creature gains one energy from the supply. 
The Shades creature falls asleep, and I gain an energy from the source, which is quite nice. We take a look at the trait, because it's a defensive one. It says, when attacked, this creature does not lose traits. Well, in this case, that doesn't apply, so it doesn't get any benefit from it. Now, your creature can also potentially have more than just one attacking trait on them, and if they do, you can choose to use some or all of those traits against the target of the attack. After resolving an attack, my creature falls asleep too. So I chose the attack action, but let's talk about sleep because as an action, you can choose to sleep. If you cannot do or do not want to perform any actions mentioned previously, so if you don't want to attack, you don't want to transmute, you don't want to gain an energy from the source, then you can activate a creature and just have them fall asleep. You place a sleep token on it. Now a sleeping creature cannot be activated. It will stay asleep until the end of the round. Of course, unless a pestering creature awakes it, which can potentially happen, a creature may only have one sleep token on its card. And when all creatures on the table are asleep, the round ends immediately. So as all my creatures are not asleep yet, it goes back to the Shade's turn. We draw from the top of the evolution deck and we place it to the right of the existing creatures the Shade has in play. We need a new trait. We're going to do this by selecting the Shade's non-sleeping creature with the most energy on its track. So the only one that's not sleeping is the one on the right. So that's the one that's getting a new trait. The trait that shows up at the very top is the one that's going to end up underneath of the creature we're talking about. Unless, of course, as I mentioned before, it's caring or metamorphic in terms of the trait on the card. Then you would rotate the card upside down to select the other trait on it. Now this trait is pretty interesting. It says this creature may transmute if it has three energy and no more than three traits. So something we got to keep an eye on. So let's go through an activation for the creature in question. And the first thing we do is check to see if it has enough energy on its track to transmute. It does not or anything to do with its abilities. We'll continue on here. The next thing is if it has an orange aggressive trait up top, it does not. So it will not be attacking. Next, the creature tries to gain a source from the lower part of the card if possible. And if the creature has gained it, its turn is going to end. There is nothing on the bottom portion of the card at this point in time and the top portion here where we could get energy from if the trait matched well that's not possible here either and finally a check through all the traits of the creature in case this creature has been out for a while and maybe has multiple traits on it if there's another trait that didn't come in during this turn that's orange it would go ahead and make an attack at this point but it doesn't have one so at this point the shade turn ends but this creature did not fall asleep it comes back to me again we're going to go through another turn because I do have a creature that is not asleep remember the end round trigger is when all my creatures are asleep nothing to do with the shades characters now in this case I have optional things I could do I could create another creature I could add a new trait if I wish and I actually am going to skip adding of a new creature right now I'm instead going to add a trait I think this fearsome trait would be really useful underneath this one in terms of optional things, that's all I'm going to do. Quite happy with this because it's going to set me up nicely for now when I have to activate my non-sleeping creature, which I'm going to do. You can see here I can choose to gain one energy from the source and I can absolutely do so from the top section of this card because the traits now match between them. So I can take an energy from here, dropping it onto the track. Now, when I gain energy in this way, my creature does not fall asleep. So because of this, it's going back to the Shades turn once again. Another Shade turn, we have a draw off the top of the Evolution deck, which got us another creature, sits on the far right-hand side when it comes into play. Now we're going to add a trait. At this point, we're looking for a non-sleeping creature that has the most energy. Well, we've got a tie here between the two, so we take a look at the leftmost one. And it's going to gain the trait of flying. It says this creature can be attacked only by a flying creature. Now remember, if that trait that comes in happens to be the exact same one as one that's already on it, then it goes to the next creature to the right of it. And of course, if that creature already has it, then the trait is discarded. So we go ahead and activate this creature. First off, we check its track. Can it transmute? No, it cannot. Can it attack? It did not get an orange trait this turn, so I can't do that. Can it gain anything from the source? No, it can't because it does not match the same trait that's up here whatsoever. And does it have any other trait from previous turns that might allow it to attack again? It does not. So there's nothing here for it to do. Its turn ends and again, it doesn't fall asleep. So now it comes back to my turn. The smart thing to do here would be go through another turn similar to the last one where I go ahead and pick up the last energy off of this energy source card up here and place it on my track. But for the purposes of moving forward and showing you how a round ends, I'm going to actually choose to sleep, which I certainly wouldn't be doing if I was trying to actually pull off a victory here. So for the purposes of the overview, we'll go ahead and we'll put a sleep token on this creature. And at this point, 
all my creatures are asleep. One thing to keep in mind about the aggressive traits, which are the orange traits on the creatures, is that every single orange trait isn't an attack trait. Some of them are just gonna give you regular abilities like when activated, as the fearsome one I have here on my creature does. The reason I'm mentioning this is because only the fire-breathing trait, the lulling trait, which I do have on my left-hand creature there, and the vampire trait are the three orange traits that allow you to attack. So keep that in mind. Lulling, as you've seen, puts the target to sleep. Vampire has the target lose one energy. And fire breathing, the target loses a trait of your choice. When the round ends, as it just did, because all my creatures are sleeping, the first thing you do is energy renewal. So you're gonna replace the energy source card, the one in the middle there, with the fearsome trait on it, with a new card, placing new energy tokens on the bottom portion and sometimes in the top portion. In this case, there was nothing up in the top portion, so the only thing we need to fulfill is placing energy along the bottom portion based on the number of players when playing solo. It's a two-player game, so four energy. Next, it is time for the awakening. All sleeping creatures are going to wake up. Now we get a chance to draw new evolution cards for ourselves. We get two cards plus one additional card for each of your creatures with at least one energy on them. So I have two with energy on them, so I get two cards right there plus the other two. Now going forward, we have even more options across the cards. And the final thing that happens is the first player marker comes over to us to begin the round. As you continue through gameplay, you'll eventually have a creature that has its track of energy completely full. As I mentioned earlier in the video, the moment that it has this and it's the active creature taking its action, you can use the transmute action in order to have everything here, including the energy as well as the traits discarded and removed and replaced with a transmutation token. At that point, you'll have one of the three transmutation tokens you need in order to secure a victory while trying your best to make sure the Shade player does not get one transmutation because that's all it takes to lose the game. The final thing I wish to show you is around choice cards. Choice cards are used in the solo mode in order to help you decide between a random creature or a random trait. So let's say you're trying to determine the shade's target for an attack against your creatures. When you have more than one, you need to determine who's getting hit. Well, you'll pull a card from the choice deck at the very top. It'll show you a target number. It'll also show an arrow. It's letting you know to start with the leftmost creature and then count out all the way to the end of the row. So one, two, when you reach the end, you go back. Three, four, five, six. So this is the creature that would get targeted by the attack. Now in a situation where the shade needs to determine a random trait, you again draw another card off the top of the shade deck. In this case, we have a seven pointing down. We're going to start at the very top of the trait list. So once you get further into gameplay, your creatures are going to have many more traits. Of course, you can't have duplicates, but there's a whole bunch of traits inside the game. You'll start at the very top, count your way to the bottom. Of course, if you reach the bottom, you start at the top again. Do a similar fashion in order to find out which specific trait the shade is talking about. And if the choice deck ever runs out, depletes itself completely, you simply reshuffle and create a brand new deck. And that, my friends, is going to wrap up this game overview and gameplay video for Evolution Another World from Crowd Games. As you can clearly see here, the footprint on the table is not large. In terms of the depth of the footprint, not much. It's probably going to go no higher than this on your table. It's going to start to sprawl out to the left and right in order to accommodate the creatures that are going to come out into play for yourself or for the shade player. But your strategy as you go through this, accumulating more creatures with more traits and trying to use those in an effective way to transmute three of the creatures faster than the Shade player can transmute one will keep you on the edge of your seat because one transmutation from the Shade player is quite quick. So you're gonna have to keep your eye on what it's doing and trying to prevent it from pulling it off. You'll be trying to gather energy in situations where it benefits you faster than allowing it to go to the Shade player. There's a number of things to keep in mind as you play through this one. And I think this is gonna be a nice lighter addition to your collection. Really hope this video helps you make that informed decision for yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of it. And as always, keep on rolling solo.